How's it going guys? Shane here from the G&G Elite DBS team. Once again, bringing you another deck profile heading into this PPG Tour Atlanta. So this is a deck that our group's been playtesting a little bit. Um, as you all know, this new Clash of Fates set came with quite a bit of Frieza support. And the Ginyu Force stuff looked kind of neat, but people weren't really sure where to go with it. They don't stand alone on their own super well. You know, they don't have a good way to end the game. And like the old Ginyu stuff is yellow, so that makes everything really wonky. But we've been playing around with it, and this is what we've come up with. And yes, I know Chain Attack Zeno isn't super spicy, but it gives the deck layers and multiple ways to end games. And in our testing, this deck's proven to be pretty viable. So, let's get into this deck list. Uh, first off, we do have our new Frieza leader, and I'm going to read my real one right here. So on our front side, we have Activate Main once per turn. Choose one card from your life and add it to your hand. Look it up two cards on top of your deck. Choose up to one red Freeze's Army card from among them and add it to your hand. Then place the rest of the bottom of your deck in any order. So this is going to let us dig every turn for these Ginyu Force guys. And it's also going to allow us to self-awaken. So those are both very good, especially in Chain Zeno decks. Like once we, after we reset, we do want to be awakened. And in the meantime, we do want to generate card advantage. So we're essentially drawing two cards a turn and that's always going to be really good. Uh, he has an Awaken, when he likes it 4 or less, you would draw one card and choose up to one of your energy and switch it to active mode. So he's a little bit like Krillin where you're going to untap one and draw one. So he's not really going to allow you to extend plays because that one energy usually isn't going to be super beneficial. But he is still at least going to let you draw a card while leaving up an energy to defend with or maybe play a foo with or things of that nature. Uh, his backside, auto when this card attacks, draw a card of course. Uh, activate main once per turn. Choose one red Freeze's Army card in your battle area and KO it. Then choose one card in your hand and place it in your drop area. This card gets plus 1,000 power to the end of your opponent's next turn. So this isn't something we're going to be using a whole lot in this deck, though it could come in handy when you're in like the post Zeno grind war. It could come in handy as you're drawing a bunch of cards with Fu and then forcing your opponent to lose cards from Hit. Um, you probably won't use it too often, but you know. It is there in case you need it. So, the deck as it is. We have four intense fine power trunks. This is mainly just there as a way to awaken a little bit faster and to evolve into chain attack trunks a little bit cheaper. It's going to allow us to play chain attack for three instead of four using evolve. Enough said. Uh, now for our Ginyu you guys, we have four Burder, four Goldo, four Raccoon. Now these guys are all pretty much the same. They are two drop 10k attackers. Um, now I believe it's Raccoon has double strike. Murder has critical and Goldo has blocker, maybe? Uh, they all have different ones. Um, but what they do when they come into play from your hand, very important, from your hand, you look at the top five cards of your deck and you choose a red Ginyu Force card with an energy cost of two other than themselves and play it. So, you know, you won't get to go endless, you know, streaming these out of the deck, but for two energy, you're getting two 10, 10k attackers. And that's going to help us apply a lot of pressure in the early game. And it can help us extend some pressure in the late game, like build a board for Fearless Pan and things of that nature. So it's just going to be very aggressive. And that's something we want to do as a Zeno deck. We want to be super aggressive and then reset and out advantage our opponent. Um, we are playing four Strike Force Jace, also Ginyu Force. He's our super combo. The only difference is when he comes into play from the hand, he doesn't fetch anybody. And you do want to be very careful playing him from the deck. Um, like the other three, because it's a super combo, and he just you don't want to attack with him. And if they play any kind of removal, he's a liability sitting on the board. So you gotta be very careful playing him from the deck. Uh, we have four body change Ginyu. Well, again, more cards from the new set. He's a three drop auto. When you play this card, choose all Ginyu Force cards you battle, and they get plus ten thousand power for the duration of the turn. So you can get some really cheeky plays in with this. Help you apply a lot more pressure. Uh, you can play this and then play a Fearless Pan in the same turn, and then you're going to have plus 5k and or plus 15k and double strike on all your Ginyu guys. So that's going to be really nuts. They go from 10k to 25k double strike, and like Burr will have critical, etc. etc. Now, his other effect, which is the main reason most people play him, is going to be activate main, place this card into his drop area. Play this card in your opponent's battle area from its owner's drop area with its skills negated, then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards of 20,000 power or less, other than body change Ginyu, gain control of it, and switch to active mode. So, you get to play him, and then because he's activate main, you can attack with him first, 
and then after you apply pressure with him, then use his effect to take one of your opponent's guys that have 20,000 power or less. You can take their figure majesty, uh, all kinds of good stuff. So, this card's a staple in red decks, and that definitely doesn't change here. But he's even better here because of his first effect, being useful. Uh, we are playing three Fearless Pan because we are playing pretty much nothing but red. So, she's going to come in and just be a game ender for us. She is also a barrier blocker for those degenerate OTK decks like Shenron, Gogeta, and the Path to Greatness deck. Uh, four Chain Attack Trunks. Again, this is another staple in red decks. We are playing Chain Zeno. It's going to be our only way to cast Zeno. And he also does just help us spam the board a little bit more. You know, for two energy if we have an intense my power in play, or three to four energy if we don't. Uh, we're getting a 20,000 attacker plus another body. That's always good. Uh, we're playing four, four seeing hit. I do think this card's going to make a massive comeback this set, or this format. Uh, being able to chain Zeno and then like just streamline four seeing hits against these combo decks is going to be super important to making sure that you can finish out a game. He has also double strikers. It's going to help us end. Uh, we're playing three Zeno, the playing god. Uh, this is just going to be a way for us to reset and, uh, you know, set our opponents back from all the combo pieces that they've been trying to acquire. So, it is worth noting, though, that the Ginyu Force guys only work if all your battle cards in play are red. So, you cannot activate them after a chain Zeno while Zeno is still in play. You'll have to either combo with him to get him off the board or wait till after he's died. So, keep that in mind. Uh, our overall choice here is going to be two scientists foo. We just want to get more card advantage after we Zeno reset the board. Um, foo is also going to be a one cost 25k. It's really important. We double strike. It's going to help us close our games. Um, be careful when you sequence with your overrun because once again, if he's in play, your Ginyu Force guys won't activate. So you need to play your Ginyu Force guys and then play your Foo. So be careful about that. Uh, we are playing three Frieza Spaceship. So this is a little cheeky card that's going to help allow us to keep generating advantage after a Zeno. So it's a two cost field card. It says auto at the end of your turn, choose up to one red Frieza's army card with an energy cost of two from your hand and play it. If you played a card with this skill, draw a card. So, after we're mainly going to be using this after the Zeno, though we of course can use it before. It just gets better for us after the Zeno. Uh, it's just going to let us play uh, Ginyu Force guys at the end of our turns and replace them so they can't trip. Um, being able to, again, flood the board and draw extra cards after the Zeno is going to be super important to making sure we outgrind our opponents. And then we are playing a little bit of a blue package. Since we are playing Zeno, it makes it a little bit easier to splash in a small blue package. Uh, anyone who kept up with the previous format saw Pan doing things like this, you know, playing 10 to 11 card, maybe even only 8 card uh, blue packages, just for Sensu Bean mainly. So we are playing 4 Sensu Bean. This is going to allow us to have a blue energy, and then, uh, let's see, you'll have the blue, tap down both your red, then you can play the bean to tap your blue and untap both your red to extend your plays. So bean's also going to be really good defensively. It's just a good card in general. Uh, and we are playing 3 Sensu Bean as our negate of choice. We just needed a few more blue cards to make the beans a little bit more relevant, a little bit better. So we are playing 3 Whis. Uh There's an argument to go to 4, maybe drop a spaceship, but eh, I think 3 is fine. Uh, we're hoping to not have to rely on negates to beat these degenerate OTK decks. We're hoping to just be able to uh, like out-aggressive them and then... I'm sorry, that was terrible be more aggressive than them, and then Zeno reset and just control the game from there. Um, overall, this deck should have fairly good matchups across the board. Nothing too terrible. Um, even like Janemba shouldn't be too, too bad. Or even like Shenron Gogeta is not too, too bad. Nothing's really overwhelmingly bad. Like hand control decks struggle because we're generating so much card advantage. Things of that nature. Uh, there is one spicy card you could sideboard. I wouldn't main board it probably, but you could sideboard it. So the, uh, let me pull it up on my computer real quick. Uh, it's the Raccoon Ultra Fighting Bomber special card. Oh, that's not it. There it is. Uh, from the new set. So it's a one cost extra card. If a Raccoon card is in play in your battle area, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with 15,000 power or less, ignoring Barrier and KO it. So this could answer the Clash of Fates Goku that's going to shut down our Ginyu Force guys from attacking. 
could answer other small barrier guys, uh, such as the Deadly Defenders, though will not answer Vegito. That's relevant. Um, you can also sideboard the Majin Vegeta from the Championship Pack to get around the Goku to just attack over it. Odds on him will be able to defend it, especially not that early. But other than that, the sideboard should look pretty normal for your typical Chain Zeno deck. Anyways, guys, that's it for this deck list. Hopefully y'all enjoyed. Hopefully this was a little spicy for y'all. We try to bring some, even though we try to stick to competitive content. I know, boring. Anyways, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. We try to answer all those questions and concerns. Um, make sure you share with your friends. Again, we like to pride ourselves on being transparent and showcasing decks that we think have potential for upcoming events with y'all. Decks that we might even play. So make sure you check all those out. Uh, we just posted a pan list that Marcus is highly considering playing in Atlanta. And make sure you check out our Twitch every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Central. Stream gameplay, deck pro, like deck doctoring, all kinds of fun stuff. Different face usually every week doing something. So a little bit of variety there. But that's it for me, guys, and stay elite.